Hello and welcome to this video about factorials and how to find a non-recursive function that calculates them. This is the standard definition of a factorial. It is the product of all these numbers. This is good enough for positive integers, but can we find these functions for non-positive integers like fractions and negative numbers? we'd have to find the factorial expressed as a polynomial or something similar to find it for these numbers. We can separate out the x so that the function looks like this. And using these two equations we can get this recursive equation that calculates factorials. Factorials tend to become very big very quickly so if we want to find a polynomial that describes this function we should define this function being the logarithm of the factorial which doesn't become very large as quickly and that could be described well by a polynomial. This is the definition of this function being the sum of all the logarithms of this number before it and this is the iterative or recursive definition of this function. So if we want to find a polynomial that is equal to this function, we'll define it here. It will only be approximately equal to it, but the approximation could be very good. I'll just write out this polynomial equation again up here. So in order to find the values of the coefficients of this polynomial, we'll need n sample points. Then we'll create a matrix equation that will give us the values of these coefficients from these samples. This process is known as interpolation and is usually done for polynomials. We can then calculate all of the elements of this matrix or at least all of the elements that can be found for the moment. We can make the coefficients vector into the subject of this equation and so all we need is a value for n. We can use Laurent polynomials to approximate this function. These polynomials use x raised to the power of a negative integer. They give the polynomial extra degrees of freedom because these extra terms might be able to more easily approximate this function. The disadvantage is that the function doesn't exist when x is equal to zero. We'll just use the x to the power of minus 1 term for now. So this is how we'll find the coefficients of this polynomial. We'll create this matrix equation, but now we'll include this reciprocal of x term and not use x is equal to 0. After evaluating some of the elements, we get this matrix equation. I'll just write it out again up here. We'll then make the coefficients vector into the subject of this equation. Now we only need a value of n, and then we can solve it. Another thing we can do is to add a log x term to this polynomial. We'll use the natural logarithm function Lx, of course. The disadvantage is we can't use x is less than or equal to 0. So x can't be 0, and it can't be negative but a log term looks like it should naturally belong here. We'll just use one log term for now. We'll create this matrix equation to solve for these coefficients. We'll evaluate all of the elements of this matrix that we can, and we'll leave numbers like log 2 and log 3 unevaluated, because they'd look too messy and confusing for the moment. I'll just write it out again up here. We'll make the coefficients vector into the subject of this equation so that now we only need a value of n to substitute into it and then to solve it to find the function that we want. Another thing we could do is to find a polynomial fraction that approximates this function well. The disadvantage is that there will be numbers that this function doesn't exist for being the roots of the polynomial in the denominator, but not when we're setting up the matrix equation to find it. An advantage is that it can give a very good approximation for this function, 
and that the function is very steady and can approach a constant value as x approaches infinity. To find the matrix equation necessary to solve for these coefficients, we'll have to do a bit of algebraic manipulation. We'll start off with this equation. We'll manipulate it so that there isn't any polynomial expression in the denominator. We'll then substitute in the entire polynomial expressions. Then we'll expand the brackets. This term fx will be a constant in this equation, since it is a known value for a particular value of x. Then we'll bring all of the terms that contain a coefficient, that is, a term containing a or b to one side, and terms not containing these coefficients to the other side. Then we'll swap this equation around. I'll just rewrite this equation at the top of the screen here. We can then pack this equation up into this vector equation. We can then construct this matrix equation from this vector equation using lots of values of x ranging from 0 to p. I'll just rewrite this equation up here. We'll evaluate all of the elements that can be evaluated. Then we'll make the coefficient vector into the subject of this equation. We'll only need a value of n and a function of f to substitute into it. Now to start calculating some approximation functions. We'll start with the polynomial that approximates this function, which is log factorial. We'll start with the general matrix equation for a degree n polynomial. We'll set n is equal to 6 and substitute this value into the matrix. We'll convert this equation into its corresponding augmented matrix. We'll calculate all of the values of this function. We'll write them here to only 4 significant figures. They will need to be accurate to 10 significant figures if we wish to be accurate enough. We'll reduce this matrix into reduced row echelon form. The solution is in the last column. I'll just write it out again up here. And so, this is the solution in vector form. We can then substitute these values into the polynomial to give us this polynomial with coefficients to four significant figures. We'll next try to evaluate the Laurent polynomial that approximates this function. This is the general form of the Laurent polynomial, with terms containing x to the power of negative integers. We'll use only the first negative integer term for now. This is the general matrix equation to find all of the coefficients of the Laurent polynomial. We'll set n is equal to 5 and substitute this into the equation to give us 7 coefficients for this function. Then we'll transform this matrix equation into its corresponding augmented matrix. I'll just write it out again up here. We'll evaluate all of the function values. And then we'll get this matrix into reduced row echelon form with all of the coefficients being in the last column. We'll rewrite this solution out as a vector equation, and then we'll write it out as a function, with the coefficients written out inaccurately to only four significant figures. Now we'll try calculating the polynomial with an extra log term that approximates a factorial. We'll just use one extra log term for the moment. So this is the matrix equation that we'll be using. I'll just write it out again up here. I'll substitute n is equal to 5 into this matrix equation to give us this equation. We'll convert this matrix equation into this augmented matrix and remember the variables we need to solve for. I'll just write it out again up here. We'll convert this matrix to reduced row echelon form which is how to solve it. Then we'll convert this augmented matrix back into this vector equation, which is the solution. And this is the equation that we have found that closely approximates the factorial function. And then last but not least, we'll find the polynomial fraction that approximates this function. 
This is the general matrix equation that we'll have to solve so as to find the coefficients of this polynomial fraction. We'll just substitute n is equal to 3 and m is equal to 3 into this matrix equation to give us this more solvable matrix equation. I'll just write it out again up here. Then we'll just convert this matrix equation into this augmented matrix. Then we'll evaluate all of the function values. I'll just write it out again up here. Solving it gives us this matrix. Then we'll convert it back into this vector equation. And so then we'll write out the actual polynomial fraction. These are the four factorial approximation functions that we've just found and now we'll measure their accuracy. This is the definition of the gamma function which is used to find the factorial of non-integers like a half which the standard factorial isn't defined to calculate. This is the exact formula for the gamma function but it isn't easy to compute exactly. We'll use the Lanczos approximation for the gamma function as a way to calculate it as closely as possible since it is a very good approximation. We'll define the error of the approximation function to be the absolute value of the difference between the approximation function and the gamma function. Now we'll find the value of the gamma function for a non-integer number which can't be found using the standard definition of a factorial and we'll write it out to a large amount of significant figures. Then we'll find the values of the approximation functions for the factorial for this value of x. Then we'll calculate the error for the standard polynomial. We'll first write down the equation. Then we'll substitute in the numbers. And then we'll get the error which looks like it's a fairly good function, maybe 0.1% accurate. So if we take a large amount of fractional values of these approximation functions and so calculate all of their errors, we can find the average error and the maximum error for each of these functions and place them into this table. Just looking at this table, we can see that the standard polynomial function is the worst, giving the biggest errors. The Laurent polynomial comes next, and then the log polynomial. But these two types of function can't calculate the factorial of zero. The polynomial fraction is the best in terms of error. I don't know why it is, but it is harder to exactly differentiate and integrate, which is its bad point. But for these purposes, it has no disadvantages. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and have learnt something useful and helpful from it. Please click like and subscribe if you have and write all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments. And thank you for watching.